Yes, welcome to Hen House Studios. And today I am very pleased we have one of my favorite artists to p perform for us, Trevi Felix from the illustrious band Boom Shaka. Trevi, how are you doing today? Doing good today, and it's good to be here. All right. Um, I'm sure many of you know that Boom Shaka has been a band um, originally from Los Angeles for probably, what would you say, about maybe 10, 15 years now? How At many least. years? Uh, I say this is our 14th year. 14th year. Um, I, on a personal note, when I first moved to Los Angeles, this is one of the main influences for me mu musically. I happen to be a big fan of reggae music. So I'd like to start the show off by Trevi. Why don't you explain a little bit to us um, how Boom Shaka was formed and when it was formed and, and the, the very beginnings of the band. I mean, it was basically formed in Los Angeles, you know, and there are five core members in the band. And that's Bing Yai from Amantiga. And then you have my brother, who's a bass player, who's, who's, you know, obviously from Dominica, the same place I'm from. And then we have Lester Fire and Lee Guitar. And, and on drums, we have Shakaman, you know, from Jamaica. So, you know, so, but that's the nature of that's the whole energy of being in the city, you know. You tend to a lot people from a lot of different places come to a city. So mm -hmm. we kinda of met in the city and kinda of begin the whole thing from there. Yeah, Los Angeles is great, great for that. It's a meeting ground. Yes. Um, many of you don't probably don't know, but Boomshaka may be based in Los Angeles, but they are an internationally renowned band. They've played in Brazil, Europe, Africa. Actually they just came back from Ethiopia. Right. And you performed for how many people? Well, we were down there for the, for the Battle of Adawa celebration, and we performed in Moscow Square, and we had 30,000 people at the show, you know? Wow. It was in celebration of, like, um, it was the 4th of July, kind of Ethiopian 4th of July, or like it's in the simple terms, you know? Because that was, they were celebrating the defeat of, like, the Italian armies when they came to conquer oh, Ethiopia. Oh, right, right. So, this was a whole celebration of that day and that vibe, you know? So, it was a good, it was a beautiful thing that happened, you know, the people appreciated the music, you know, it was mm. good to do that for them. And you met the president of Ethiopia? We met, um, yeah, we met quite a few people in the country, you know, we happened to have, um, we met the mayor of Addis, you know, after the show, went to his office, and met the president of the country, you know, so it was a good, you know, diplomatically, a lot of really cool things happened from this, you know, and the people really appreciated the music on a whole lot of different levels, mm. so that was beautiful. Wow. And it will be like a thing, I think, but we'll be going back again, you know? It's like a, it's, it, this won't be just like a place where we just want to do a gig. It's going to be a different thing. Mm. When you go play in, in places like this, I know like in your, you've been to Switzerland and other countries, you end up doing a lot of main television shows, prime time TV shows, performing, and, and which is something I don't think that happens here in the United States as much. They don't really provide that platform from reggae music. Why do you think the rest of the world, Africa and Europe, are so open to reggae music and giving you some prime time? Well, um, I think probably the different business things running, running, happening in America, which I don't really can't really explain to you exactly what it is, you know. But um, it's almost like a simple thing, also too. Like you never really appreciate it in the community that you come from, almost. So you know, mm. it's almost an energy like that, you know. So, but the music when we when we created the music, it was for the whole world. It was not just for the, for to happen in Los Angeles. You know, so we, we found that, you know, people from other parts of the world have really held onto the sound and appreciate what we would do, what we're doing, what we continue to do, you know? Mm. So that's a good outlet. And that was the whole vibe and energy from the beginning to, to be able to do that, you know what I mean? So we were not just like concentrated on busting inside Los, Ange Los Angeles, you know? Mm. That the music, the things, the themes we were talking about, the music would represent the whole planet, not just us and our local environment, what we're dealing with, you know? So uh, ho uh, hopefully that's happening. Another thing about this band that you might not know, know, not only do they tour constantly and play all around the world, they also are an incredibly accomplished recording band. They have four albums out to date, the first one being Creation, then Freedom Now, yes, then um, Best Defenses, Best Defenses and, and then Rebel Re Lion. Rebel Lion. Those four records, and just finished another record. Right. Have you titled this record yet? Um, the working title is Fertile Ground, you know? Fertile ground, Fertile great ground, name. you know, and um, this is the working title for the record. Hopefully, we're going to drop this record this summer. Mm -hmm. We have some really great songs on the record, you know. We redid it like um, an acoustic version of Creation. We have songs like from um, a YouTube song, Bloody, Rebel, Bloody Sunday, you know, we call it Rebel Sunday. We have songs like Ganja Discrimination, mm -hmm. Rastafari is the Future, you know. 
So we know th there's things that the people who've been following the band who love the band going to really represent and love, man. It's a great album. Mm. So why don't you play us a tune? You want to say, what, is it going to be a tune off one of your records, your new record, a, a previous recording, or something, something uh, different? What do you, you want to play for us? I'm going to play you some um, of the new upcoming Boom Shack album, you know? This, is one, this, is, this one's for all the boys and girls. This one is called Ganja Discrimination. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ganja discrimination, you know? It's Fresh of the Boom Shaka album. So, uh, there's a lot of people in the world, and they see a Rasta, they see the dreads, they think marijuana. <coughs> a lot of people don't really have a deep, deeper understanding or appreciation for the actual religion, the Rasta religion. So, I was wondering if you could take a moment to educate the youth and, and, and the elders of the world who, don't, who I think have a lot of misconceptions about what, you know, what, what it means to be a Rasta. Well, even for the herbal thing, you know, I'm, you know, I'm going to start with the herbal situation. For me, that's why this song was really written. The song is called Ganja Discrimination. And where we looked at this thing as a human rights issue, you know, because all type of plants have, you know, you can use them out in, you know, you can use tomatoes and onions and everything. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, Aloe, the, aloe vera, yeah. Exactly. All of a sudden, these men decide, you know, out of all these plants in the jungle, they decide to make this one, you know, mm -hmm. illegal. And really, as a human, you know, just like a man on the planet, we know that herb is the healing of the nation because this is a plant that you could use to manufacture clothing, fuel, you know, and all kinds of things on the planet, you know. That's the only herb that, that's the only plant the planet can really compete with oil to really fuel the industrial age. It's ganja, you know what I mean? So we want the people, them, you know, and all this, and man fighting wars over oil, you know, and little poor countries, you know, spending so much money to buy fuel from these guys when who dig up oil, you know, from their fields, you know? And they could be planting herb to drive their cars and all them things, you know? So we just want to, like, I don't even need to de defend herb. Herb can defend itself because it's been here before the laws of man and before mm -hmm. any other civilization, you know? So it's going to outlast them also, too. But, you know, the type of ignorance that exists about it, you know, yeah, we, you know, we have to go beyond that, you know? And that's what this whole song was addressing. And, and what's the concept of Selassie I? I know a lot of people don't realize that so he was a real person. He spoke at UCLA, I think, in, what, 68 or 70 mm -hmm. or something like that. And, he showed up in Jamaica, and people were saying that he was, you know, the reincarnation or the, the, the like Jesus Christ. Or maybe you could take a little bit and, and, and educate us on what. Well, the as far you know, and where the Rasta man is concerned, with the whole this His Majesty's house is like really this, that His Majesty traces lineage for the for the lineage of King David and Solomon, and you know. So, and as Rasta man, we see His Majesty as a representative of Christ in I and I time, in our time. Uh -huh. You know, we accept the divinity, divinity of His Majesty. 
Um, what happened to Selassie? I, I mean, what? And he's no longer alive. What, what was his fate? Well, Selassie I was taken away from Jubilee, Jubilee Palace in 1974, September 11th, 1974. That, you know, that was the last, that was, he was seen walking out the palace of Jubilee Palace. And there have been rumors that he was buried underneath Mengusto's, um, <laughs> Mengusto's office mm. and all kinds of things, you know. But that happens to be one of the greatest mysteries, you know, modern day histories oh, in terms of like that. exactly where, what happened to his remains and where's this man at? Mm, he was a very majestic figure yes. with his lions. It was, it was a beautiful sight. Well, his majesty just different truths and rights, you know, mm -hmm. and just the whole concept, uh, you know, and even as a statesman and as a visionary for organizing the OAU, which is the Organization of African Unity, to really um, bring that whole, the whole African nation, regardless of borders, under one banner, you know, that's a very, very deep thing, you know, and this because this will give control. If that happens, that's going to give people, the people themselves, control of the what's on their land, the property that's on their land, you know. Mm -hmm. So those things, those things has to be presented to even, nobody really presented a, a, such a plan to the African people. And he was like really instrumental, even living at the visionary for something like that too. And, he, and really addressing and putting pressure. And even the boys in South Africa, when they had, North Africans and all kinds of human bondage, you know, really being able to defend the man them intellectual and spiritual level also mm -hmm. too, you know. So we have a lot of things. Not only Rastaman need to thank his majesty for the type of works he did, you know, it's the whole the whole Western world. You know what I mean? That's great. Okay, well <coughs> I'd like to set up this clip. We shot a clip uh, at Hen House Studios with Trevi from Boom Shaka. I wish I, I actually shot it in the studio and outside the studio, and it'll, you'll get a deeper understanding about this great, internationally renowned, very well-known reggae band, Boom Shaka. You guys ready in there? John, you ready to run our clip? We got you covered. Okay, let's run. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. Boom Shaka. Greetings. I am Trevor Felix, representing the whole Boom Shaka enterprise and gentlemen and such and such, you know. You have um, Lester Farai, who's on lead guitar. I think he just brings like a really amazing sound to the band, you know, in terms of his experience, you know, and his just his knowledge of like, you know, just soul music, African music, you know. And I feel like he just brings like a really crucial element to the band. It really makes a lot of things musical that we do a little more legit, you know. And you have my brother Basie, who plays the bass, Colin Ray Felix, you know. But then again, he was the one who really taught me how to play. He taught me, <laughs> he, he taught me how to play an instrument. He taught me how to play guitar, you know what I mean? This road. Is long, 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 long. So, and, and right now we're playing music together, so that's a beautiful thing itself. So, man, there's so much things I could say about him, you know. I just enjoy playing with him, you know what I mean? I really enjoy playing with him. This road is so rocky. And Little George and Bingy Eye, they're the keyboard players. And Bingy Eye is, is a cat I've been playing for for years, you know. He's just instrumental in the whole song of the band, you know. And we have Shakaman, the resident mad scientist of our own personal Lee Scratch Perry, <laughs> you know, producer extraordinary, you know, who, who just brings like a crucial song to the band, you know, in terms of just like his, his, his imputation of rhythm, you know, I mean, that shit is just vital. Hey, now come on, be a the that's why. Okay, rolling. He's one of the few brothers on the planet is aware of the history and aware of all the, you know, the imputation of the song. You can interpret it, you know what I mean? And conquer it. He's from Jamaica, originally from the Rastafarians, the reggae band of Rastafarians. Worked with everybody you can call in reggae music, you know? It's over 12 years. And within that time, we put together four albums. We pretty much earn a living from like toying and playing live, you know? And even that's on the edge, you know? But you know, basically over the years, what we've really supported ourselves was playing live music, you know what I mean? You 
gonna be revolutionary. I uh, have revolutionary ideas and your ideas you're exposing for music. You can't be in like a studio or like. <laughs> I like to record, but I also like to like actually go and be able to play them songs with those people live, you know. like trying to explain myself say well you know what no matter what happens you know no matter what reality exists tomorrow no matter confusion exists no matter who's the president no matter what happened you know what I know for sure that Rastafari is going to be my future that's one thing I'm certain of God is going to be part of my life you know what I mean we're going to be riding together you know some type of vibe don't care what happened don't care which guy talk or what song him sing or which history book he find <laughs> Of what new evidence he got, you know. For me, you know, yeah, my Rastafari is the future. Um, 
international diplomat probably was just explaining that whole concept of Rastafari is the future. That, yeah, man, I know he's an ambassador of His Majesty, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm ambassador of His Imperial Majesty, of, you know, I'm, a, I'm ambassador Rastafari, you know what I mean? Yeah, I have to live that way. Rastafari. <laughs> Yes, Boom Shaka, Trevi Felix in the house here at the beautiful Comcast studio in Marina Del Rey. Um, as you can see by this clip, this is a very deep individual, an incredible band. One thing that I would like to say again on a personal note is I've known Trevi for years and your message and who you're about is so well expressed through your music. So if you don't, don't actually personally know this gentleman, you really get a strong feeling for who you are through your music and I think it's great because you're not an individual that openly expresses your feelings to people who don't who might not be interested but everyone loves your music so they hear it and it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a it's a beautiful a beautiful thing enough of that I think people really would like to hear another tune you want to play another song yeah man all right cool on the bass Shaka. So Trevi, let me ask you a question. You, um, you know, you've, you originally from Dominica, yeah, and then you moved to Florida when you were ten. I was no, I was older, 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 fifteen years, fifteen like years 14, old, no, fourteen years old. Yeah. One thing I that um, I remember you telling me that strikes me as being very interesting in a, in a statement of this country is that growing up, you were really never victimized by discrimination. In, Do in Dominica, anywhere, maybe you were, but no nothing near the level of of people in this country. And when you came here, you saw people who, who have similar color skin as you mm -hmm. that they had gone through so so many more trials and tribulations, and had you could actually feel that 
they're, they're, from the get-go, was going to be a lot more difficult for mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. So maybe you could elaborate a little bit on that and, and maybe offer some advice to the youth of America who are victimized by discrimination. Well, hmm. It's, it's interesting. It's, it's, it's strange to react to that right now, you know. But um, the population of the place I came from was really like a black country where like 99 percent, 0.9 percent of the population is black people, you know. Mm -hmm. So you find that energy, you know what I mean? Was never really interacting with people from different cultures. Wasn't really that, um, you know, it was not like it is inside of America, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But Definitely, we, the, the same type of colonials that went in America also went down in, a, in, um, in the Caribbean also to on a different level too, you know, I remember it's the same thing. But um, I think coming to America, it put me in a situation I had to interact with just not even black people, but also like white people and other type of people. And America itself was going through that transition, it's still going through that transition right. of people learning to respect the people, each other, irregardless of the color of their skin, you know, all them things there, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And there's a, in some people's eyes, you know, even we inside the Caribbean, people sometimes even go as far as to say, this is actually the ghettos of really of America. Uh -huh. some, people, some people say that. So American culture and Caribbean culture, you know, a lot of it is very similar things happen inside the place, you know, because we watch television, right. we watch Jerry Springer, all them things there, you know, so I mean, the, the so culture really is very, you know, it's very the close. The message is the same. It comes down to, to respect. People. I mean, you, people have to respect each other, you know. Right. And even this music that I play, hopefully, that's what really transcends from the music. Well, that, we're running, we're running out of time, so why don't you t play us one more song and take us out? We just got about thirty seconds left, and play us a tune, man. <laughs> thirty seconds left. Yes, just play us a tune. Let's do it. I want to play along. Let's go. This one is called Rastafari is the future. Yes. When we say Rastafari is the future, all we really mean to say is that God is the future. You know, dig this one. Rastafari is the future Rastafari is the future Children Yeah Rastafari is the future Rastafari is the future Children Babylon war, give the people their justice and equality. 